on the cusp of my 30 mumble birthday, I have started back to school because why not? Hello and welcome to Book Hoarding by Bianca. Sometimes I talk about books, but today I'm talking about my life. Um, I've recently decided to go back to school and I'm taking fashion classes and I'm really excited. So the background is because of where I live, I get free community college for being a resident of this very expensive city in America. I feel like for a lot of people, the panini has really pushed us to be like, life is short, what brings us joy, what doesn't bring us joy. And I think if you've been watching my videos, I've mentioned many times that like sewing's brought me joy. That was the thing that I really was thinking about a lot. And when I thought about how I could take these free community college classes that were fashion driven, that were all about all the cool things that I already love and that I've independently tried to reach like research and figure out myself, it just made a lot of sense for me to do this. Don't get me wrong. I totally understand that like going back to school is also a privilege in itself, but I'm willing to like balance all of the like time management and like costs of all this to like make this happen for me because it's something that I really enjoy on like journalism. And it's something that like thus far has been a outlet for me and my creativity on like journalism. So anyway, it's been a really positive space for me because it's my sewing and crafting and all those things are the things that I've been coming to in times of like need and like needing that emotional reset, but also like learning these things in a more professional way um, and from teachers and everything has been really cool and fulfilling. I'm gonna talk about some things that I've learned in class over the first week of classes. I've had two classes, so I thought I'd do a one week of fashion class kind of here's my overall impressions and here's everything that's happened. Um, and yeah. So a few things before I go over some of the stuff I've learned. Um, one, it is terrifying to go back to school at any time. Um, two, there is some confidence in being like, I'm not really having to rely on this for like a degree. If I get maybe a certificate, that might be the max that I do. Um, but I'm not going for like a degree of some kind. I already I have too many, too many of those and boatloads of debt. Um, this is 100% I think that I'm doing for me. And because of that, I find pleasure in that. Like if I happen to down the line find like a side job or some kind of space in that to use these skills, that might be interesting. But for now, I don't really have that in mind. I think the most that I have in mind for any of the skills that I learned through my fashion classes will be just making patterns that I might sell. Um, and so like learning, that's why I'm taking pattern class learning how to make professional level patterns so that then I could make those on my own and then potentially put those on my Etsy. Like I already have patterns for different Regency purses um, and little things like little projects like that. But working on like a bigger fashion project, like my batwing yoke thing that I recently did, if I could figure out a way to make that yoke thing graded for different sizes and accessible, that might be a really cool thing that I could do down the line. I also constantly get the like, friends who are like, I would love for you to make me a dress one day. And I am not there yet. I'm not there yet. And it's definitely not the friends who are like, make me a thing for free. It's like a s friends who just genuinely want me to make cool stuff for them and pay me for it. Um, and I've never felt like I was fully there because I just haven't learned to make patterns and I haven't learned to like pattern for different sizes other than my own size. So I'm really excited for these fashion classes because hopefully this will give me the experience to make these things for people. And then I can fulfill like the wishes of people and be like, yeah, like let's make a dream dress for you. Like let's do like a fun little thing. I was a big fan of watching shows like Project Runway and like I've even watched like the new Making the Cut and all those things. So I went into this being like, I really hope that this doesn't have the toxicity of like some of these places. And so far it's been really nice. Um, like one of my teachers is actually really into historical fashion and that makes my heart just the happiest it's ever been when she said that. Um, because I feel like often if if you are like me and you watch those shows, they sometimes really talk down about invoking historical styles and stuff. Those are different silhouettes though, and we've kind of stuck to the same silhouette for a lot of modern fashion. Historical fashion, literally if you watch those like Victorian things where like the silhouette of people's bodies goes like this the whole time, I think it's really interesting. And I also think there are a lot of little detail work skills from historical fashion that I'd love to incorporate in like potential designs. There is potential for me to like submit student stuff to like a student fashion show. That might be a thing that I do down the line. I don't know, again, like 
I just want to have fun so I'm not overthinking anything. I am maybe a little over eager about everything right now but you know I'm sure that malaise of being a student will eventually come back to me. So until then I'm excited. Here are some things that I've learned if you've watched some of my shorts or any of my short form video content across my Instagram, my TikTok, any of it. You've seen me kind of go over this, but I thought I'd give you like the TLDR of a bunch of stuff that I've learned. There are actually three ways to make patterns. The first one is draping, where you basically, you've seen it, people take a piece of fabric, they put it on a mannequin and they just start pinning and placing and ruffling and doing all the things on the mannequin. And then they take that off and they use that after they've either made marks on the thing or cut into it however they want to um they pull that off and they'll make that the pattern so after you've cut into that and made that flat that becomes now a pattern that you can make again you can put that on top of the fabric and just immediately cut you've seen me do that on this channel where i did that for the bat yoke thing where i made a muslin mock-up um i put it on myself tested it out changed it up and then i cut it all up and put it down on my fabric and that was the final piece. So pattern drafting is the thing that I did to originally get my slopers and again I will make sure that I link to the closet historian going over that because that's basically just following directions that say numbers, measurements, this is how you coordinate that and put that on a piece of paper. Um, it's really interesting but it is a little bit like you got to have your brain in like a very concentrated space to be able to do it because there is going to be measurements and math and a lot of just like what are you talking about if you've never done it before but if you follow along with those videos you'll get an idea of how it works and basically that's how pattern drafting is it's using numbers and measurements and connecting those dots and it's a lot of like using rulers and like french curves and stuff to make sure that you're getting those lines lined up and looking good and the last kind of pattern making is flat patterning which is what i'm showing you today which is the using a sloper and then making com combinations of things through that to make a new pattern this is a half scale sloper so a little sloper is basically a little thing that is made to curve around the um traditionally female form that is gonna have boobies um and so once you sew that together it's gonna fit a three-dimensional shape. A sloper at its core is just like the basic thing that you can start with to make patterns and then based on like how you move those darts, style lines, all those things, you can change what the garment actually is. This is like I used a manila folder to cut out the perfected one. Um, you can draft these and I will link out to the closet historian who actually has a whole video on drafting a full-size sloper and I actually followed her directions to try making the full size. She uses the same textbook that I actually have. So slopers can be made full size. This is a full size sloper for my size. Um, it does not include seam allowances and all those other little things, but these are at least ways to kind of get your mind around like this makes this, which can make clothes. Once you get a sloper, what do you do now? Once I followed a pattern drafting video to make the sloper, I put it on manila paper to make a little sturdier one that I'll be using to trace on this Ikea paper that I literally got at like Ikea. It's like a little craft roll of paper that's back here. Um, and you make little ones. And then what can you do with little ones? Dart manipulation, my friends. So dart manipulation is basically when you move this to somewhere else and you make it a different seam line, but it still fits the same way. There are a couple ways you can do dart manipulation. You can do the slash and spread method and you can do the pivot method. So the slash and spread is really cool because you can move that same seam across the whole bodice. All right, so here you can see that I'm just moving that dart around the bodice. The one on the left, I've moved to the neckline and you can see my poorly done sketch up top where those seam lines are. And then the one on the right, you can see I moved it, the dart to midway along the arm side. Um, these are really basic things you can do anywhere in between any of this that I'm doing here. The one on the left, you can see I've just moved the dart to the center of that bodice and the other one on the right I've moved to the shoulder. Again, look at the little sketches. They indicate a little bit of like where that would look like as a fashion line once it's sewed up. On the left, I've just moved it to the neckline. On the right, it's another shoulder seam, a little bit more severe. And then you can just look at them lined up. Um, 
so it's kind of magical, right? Like you can move that same seam, that same dart anywhere, and it gives you some really cool seam lines. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through doing slash and spread. Basically, you're going to take a sloper, and then you're going to make a copy of it um, on a lighter weight paper. So the sloper I made on manila paper, and then the lighter paper is the, again, Ikea craft paper that I used. You can use, like, printer paper, any of that. Uh, and you'll want to figure out where your, your seam, your dart's going to move, where that fashion line's going to go. So I just pick mid shoulder just because and then you're going to line that up and make a line to your bust point and like this is all really basic like if you were doing this for real for real like you'd be like moving off the bust line so it's not just a pointy bust line thing but I'm just showing you the basics here so I'll use my scissors um or my rotary cutter um, both of these are relegated to paper only so don't don't fret so I've made that little cut and you can already see here that it's it's pretty easy to move around again like do not cut all the way through you leave a little little bit at that junction at that bus line so that you can move stuff around then you're gonna get some tape I just am using really basic office tape office supply tape that I have scotch tape and you'll want that for all your pattern drafting stuff and pattern making stuff because it's it's just the easiest thing. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna close up that dart now. Look at that, magically closing that up. Oh, look, pivot, pivot, pivot. And then I just put tape over it and I'll probably true up that edge just a little bit um, when I'm done done with this, but that's it. Uh, that dart is now in the shoulder and that's pretty much how you would do all of these I'm gonna quickly draw I think yeah I'm gonna draw um, I'm gonna draw what this would look like once sewn where the seam lines would move where the dart would move so it's still gonna fit closely to the body but again like the lines no longer are um, along the waistline center they have moved up along the shoulder seam. So there we go. Look at me making arrows. So I'm pointing to the darts and where they were. And now it has moved to the top. Right there. Magic! There's also the pivot method. And I will insert footage right now of me doing the pivot method. Okay, yet again, you're gonna need some basic paper. You're gonna need your sloper. And then I've decided to do the same shoulder seam you're going to mark your sloper onto this paper up to that bust line. Look at me using pen when I should be using pencil. Oh, wow. So making the arrow of where you're marking your stuff to. So you're only marking up to that first bust line, bust point, dart leg, and then where you want your dart to move to. And then you're going to use that bust point as a pivot line. I'm trying to do this upside down, so forgive me for the shakiness of all this. And then you're going to start from there, from where you left off. You're going to fill that void in there. You're going to draw along the rest of it now that it's pivoted over. Trust the process. Trust the process. It's very new, very different. So now you've moved that. That's closed. So now you have to mark in the dart because it's now open and it's there. So you're going to just draw a line to your bust point, to your new openings, to the, the new places there. And that is your new little, little dark change. It, so I'm showing you exactly the slash and spread. It's the exact same turnout. It just is a different method to get there. So is it really the same thing? Like once you outline the pivot thing, you can also immediately put on the seam lines and the grain lines and all those things, and then test, cut it out, test it out. Okay, so I'm using the paper that I use the pivot method on. You're going to move that bust point back because you're not gonna want that bust point to be sewn up to the, the bust point because then it's just going to be Madonna pointy. So I'm just redrawing that so it's moved off. 
and making notation of that so you can see like it's no longer the center it'd look very weird if you did so straight to to basically the nipple so then I'm putting in my seam allowances which is where things are going to get sewed down with fabric um, you're going to need that allowance so that it literally can make a garment um, because the sloper and everything is just those are the exact measurements of your body but you need to put in seam lines and seam allowances because that's how you or a sewer or whatever is going to know how much extra like how much to actually cut the fabric out um so these are little things that are important along the way and you can see this is how i currently measure for my curves where i'm measuring out my seam allowance and giving myself that those little dots and then I kind of play connect the dots so then I get my French curve and try to line that up as much, much as I can um, for the half scale I use the inside of the French curve because it's a little bit more true and accurate to that smaller angle that I need um, if you don't have French curves I will link to a free printable French curve set in my description. I will also link to French curve set that I bought on Amazon. Yes, I know some people don't like Amazon. That's fine. Some of us don't have a ton of money. Um, and then this is where you would mark the fold just for folks to know. Some people just write fold. I just do the little arrow thing because I'm used to using industrial patterns. And then the grain line is just showing somebody the grain of the fabric that they need to line the pattern up to. So you can see there it's it's I've added a bunch of stuff. Uh, it'd be cleaner for a final thing obviously but for now you can see there's a much cleaner version of a final pattern. Has all the little, little lines in there. Um, you wouldn't theoretically put seams in a dart this is just for practice and to give you an idea of how this works. Um, I will explain later why seams and darts are not a thing, but not today. I've already learned a lot just from two classes and I hope that uh, this has maybe helped you understand some of like what pattern drafting and pattern making is. Anyway, so that's an overview of my first week of fashion classes. It was really cool, really interesting, really fun, and I'm having a great time. Let me know if you want more updates on my fashion school classes, experience, I would be very happy to share them. I know people immediately always ask me to do tutorials on things when I've learned things, but um, I'm going to refrain from doing full tutorials until I've actually gotten more experience in it, which is why you might be seeing lace making tutorials soon because after half of a year I finally feel confident enough to teach a few basic skills. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share my lovely content. I have more Halloween stuff on the way and potentially more fashion info on the way, so don't miss it. I would like to thank my patrons at the Lizzie Bennett tier and above, and um, mind I also have a coffee and a Patreon with multiple tiers and lots of benefits, so don't forget to join. Thank you for tuning in and don't forget to make it so.